The hour is 6 p.m. and it's time for the regularly scheduled New Fane Select Board meeting. Uh, Monday, July 2nd at the New Fane Town Offices. Uh, with us tonight is uh, Mike Fitzpatrick, Chris Williams, Shelley Huber, and myself, Gary Nellius. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? None being. We will proceed to the minutes. We have the minutes for the Tuesday, June 26th meeting. Make a motion to second. There's a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Motion to accept and second. Is there a discussion? All none being, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. The ayes appear to have it. The minutes are passed. That's for the July 26th meeting. This will be for the July, June 18th meeting. Here somewhere. Two minutes? Yeah. Yeah, for the... Um... Right. Okay, that's unique. That's yours, sir. Okay. okay. okay that one. So, for the June 18th minute, is there a motion? Make a motion and a second. There's a motion, is there a second? I'll second it. Shelley seconds and uh, there's a discussion. None being, we will proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the same. The June 18th minutes are passed. Third foreman's report. Um, the remainder of the Jersey barriers have been removed and replaced with guardrail. Uh, they also replaced some of the older post and cable that had fallen over on Dover Road. Um, we had another windstorm just before the last select board meeting. Um, most of the damage involved power lines, so we ended up with six roads that were closed for an extended period of time. Um, we've removed a number of trees from the area of Sunset Lake Road where the ditching was taking place. Uh, the ditching's been completed and we hydro seeded the banks. Um, there, we've still got a few more trees to clean up, but we're going to wait till the weather cools off just a little. Um, grading is continuing. We're going to replace, be replacing more culverts. And um, I received an email that the Adams Brook project will begin on July 12th. Um, there will be short delays on Adams Hill during the project, so we put some gravel onto new road so Adams Hill residents can use it as an alter alternate route. Um, we're going to be putting up the Brookside signs hopefully this week. I tried to pick them up today, but the sign maker wasn't in, so hopefully we'll get those up this week. Is there a motion on the Road Commissioner's report? I'll make a motion to accept it. Motion's been made to accept. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Um, my only note is that maybe on number one, we put in there Dover Road to designate that. Jersey barriers were related to the Do Dover Road. Okay. Just for historical fact. <laughs> Any further additions, corrections, sermons, sermonettes, testimonials, Deuteronomies of the soul? None being, we'll, re we'll prepare to vote. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All opposed the same. And the I don't understand that. You didn't like number one? No, just adding the um, address of where it was being done, Dover Road. Oh. It's not listed there, so I don't know where it's being done. Just an addition of the location. All right, no problem. No problem with that. Okay. Moving on to the administrative assistance report. W Building Supply, we did receive the required exemption letter and the closing will be held on Monday, July 9th oh, good. at 1 p.m. So, Great. moving on. Um, we had a rental at the Williamsville Hall last weekend. Um, it appears that the hall hasn't really been kept up with as far as cleaning, and the people who rented it had to spend money and time scrubbing the hall before their wedding. Um, so they have requested at least a partial refund of their rental. Um, and so I let them know I would forward that request to the board. 
um, my question would be who's the cleaner and at what? Well, we mm -hmm. have a cleaning person who only, the theory behind it is that when somebody rents it, they leave it as clean as they found it. And that's always worked. But we've had a lot of, um, you know, groups using it mm -hmm. that don't, I mean, they do pay, they make a donation to the town for using it, but they don't do security deposits and there's no real arrangement for cleaning. So I think that's sort of a step that was missed. Um, so we don't have a cleaning person per se for the whole hall. We do have somebody that does the downstairs for the senior meals. These groups, that, <coughs> excuse me, these groups that come in there and use that and don't clean it and don't what they don't rent it either. They just they make a donation based on like say if it's the the group that does the plays, whatever income they make off of the plays, they donate you know a portion to. Well, the town. they should clean it too. So I think we just somehow missed a step when we. What were the complaints? The what? I'm the sorry. complaints of the dirtiness. What was? I was actually in there. It was pretty bad. There was you know soda cans laying around. It was, um, people had left stuff behind. It was it was dirty, dusty. Well. Um, so I think if it, like in the case of a rental, someone's paying top dollar, full dollar, that someone goes in prior to them getting right. the rental. Right, and we've never had to do that because it was always private rentals and it was always cleaned by them when they were done with it. So, I mean, I don't see a problem keeping it that way. It's just, we, I think we have to let everybody know that you're supposed to clean it when you're done. Meaning now there's a change, uh, it used to be just private rentals yeah. and now it's open to... Um, yeah, different groups have groups, been using it for things. And they've actually been using it on a long-term basis, so I don't, honestly, I don't think they thought there would be private rentals in between. Uh -huh. So they weren't, you know, really... What we do when we have events is um, we tell the people that, okay, if you don't clean it, you'll be charged X amount of right. money. And we do take a security deposit, and if they don't clean it, they don't get their security deposit back. Mm -hmm. But if they're not really paying, we don't have a security deposit. So well, we should pay. When was the last time it was cleaned? Well, now it was. It, they just went through it really well. Do we know who was using it for before these people were using? It? So we should get in touch with them and let them know that you know we don't appreciate it. We donated the use of the hall to them. We don't appreciate them leaving it dirty. That doesn't make it appropriate for other people who are paying to rent the hall. Right. And it should be kept clean. Okay. Uh, well, again, what was the? They paid 150 to use it. How much they looking to get back? They were willing to take anything, but I know they spent about probably close to 100 dollars in cleaning supplies. Wow. It was that bad. But it, it was also a wedding, so. Right. I mean, I think they they wanted it to be extra nice, probably oh, nicer sure. than we would normally have it. Yeah. So they may have gone above and beyond what we would hire somebody to do, but. What's the pleasure of the board? I'd make a motion to refund them their cleaning money. It was like that, and they cleaned it up, and they're all done too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It costs us to have it done if it's done well. Motion to refund the cleaning money. Um, is there a second? A second. Okay. Do you want to give a dollar amount? Um, you say about a hundred dollars. Yeah. How so much? A hundred dollars for cleaning. Uh, <clears throat> and I, did, I say give them seventy-five. Uh, let's let's go ahead and get the motion underway for discussion. We got a number, a motion in at a hundred, and it's seconded. So, you think it should be seventy-five? Any other discussion on that number? Um, I'm good at 100. Okay. Well, if they say they got 100 in, if they get the receipt for it, I just want to give them the 100 back. You know, I mean, I don't care either way. I mean, it's kind of an embarrassment to us. Yeah. I would have um, had it cleaned professionally or had it done prior to them. I mean, it wasn't just soda cans. Didn't you say there was some dead mice and stuff? Yeah, there was some dead mouse in the stairwell. It was, it was just. So, so for further discussion, who is cleaning it <clears throat> on a regular basis? Nobody? No. And we've never needed somebody to go in regularly because, like I said, all of the renters 
they find it clean, they leave it clean. So there wasn't. It sounds to me like it needed a, a deep cleaning. Yeah. And that uh, I would think so we that we do you have somebody that cleans the downstairs for the senior meals. Um, whether she'd be willing to come in once every couple of months and do the upstairs, I don't know. Any any other discussion on our side? Well, I think we should have some sort of protocol that says, you know, there's a spring cleaning and there's a fall cleaning, yep. mandatory, and it's figured in the budget if we're going to rent it out and then make new rules for anybody, either they're paying full, you know, full or partial, these are the rules. Any thoughts from the folks in the high price boxes? Yes. Okay. If you have, if you have a, uh, a wedding party in there, you know, in the aftermath of that event, I don't know how you can really reasonably expect someone from that group to be cleaning. It wasn't the wedding that didn't clean. The wedding no. did clean it up after. Yeah. Good for them. I mean, I just think, <laughs> generally speaking, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, usually you give them the next day because nobody's in there the next day. They come in and either family members or friends clean it up for them. Okay, well. We've never fine. had an issue with a private rental. <laughs> Uh, relative to the remark from behind me, I would say they may not have to or be able to clean it up that day, but they can hire somebody. Mm -hmm. Wedding planning is a, is complicated and expensive, but I think that you should make sure that they <coughs> are set to do that. And my next question: Do you have written uh, oh, agreements? Yeah, we do. Agreements? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should add yeah. into that that if you wish for us to clean the room after you're finished it'll be this much money mm -hmm. and just add it in if not we will expect the room to be uh, cleaned or we will add it to your uh, security deposit or de deduct it from your security deposit yes Ken. does the agreement have the list of the things that need to be done in order for it to be clean yes okay so they have a job description pretty much yeah I don't think anybody can. And then who does a check-in on it, like monthly or anything? One of the committee members goes in after each rental, and um, they're usually in there pretty often. So did that not happen this time? I'm not sure what happened. There was just a disconnect that I, I don't know. So if there's a committee member for that building? So there's, maybe yeah, there's like eight or nine of them. There should be maybe a, a, a walkthrough someone should show up so that when they get there, everything's okay? Yeah, there is. They okay. Yeah. That's why I'm not really sure what happened. Uh, okay. Any more discussion on the motion? To refund $100 um, to the people who had the wedding for them having to do it themselves? Any further discussion on that motion? Okay, just uh, yeah, go ahead, Chris. This was a wedding? This was a wedding. Now, <clears throat> the people had to clean it up to use it for the wedding, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. I understand now. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Those opposed the same? Ayes have it. And let's go on. Um, town planning hearing? Yes, okay. uh, just a reminder to the board that the town plan hearing will be at 5.30 on the 16th. So just plan on arriving half hour early with the regular meeting starting at 6. Um, and then the regularly scheduled maintenance on all of the town office computers is we're about halfway done. Um, I connected four of them today and I have four to do tomorrow. So. Okay. My motion on the motion administrative assistance. Second. Uh, I make a motion to accept it. Mike already got oh, a motion. Sorry. Chris got a second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed the same? Congratulations. You pass. Thank you. <laughs> Unscheduled members of the public. Anyone 
who would like to be an unscheduled member of the public. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Archie Clark. I'm, uh, yes, Archie. Do you remember, remember? Yes. I'm, uh, I was one of the bidders on the uh, um, Dover Road um, reconstruction project. And I've noticed that the, uh, the pavement has yet to be done, which was uh, spelled out as part of the project. Um, mm -hmm. We built in our bid $10,000 for removing the blacktop, traffic control, putting the blacktop down, and uh, it's, it's been six months. Nobody, nobody expected that paving was going to get done in January, February, or March, but certainly April, May, or June uh, would have been an optimum time to, and I was just wondering if there was any, any schedule for that work, or is it? Jerry, uh, Chris, Mike, you guys have input? I don't have input on it because I, I didn't bid the job. Yeah, okay. Um, have you heard from the contractor, Jay? No, that's, that's no. my okay. business now. Yeah. No, we plan on doing it. You have it on the schedule yet? No, I've talked to Dave about it. Okay. But it's going to be happening. All right. Okay. I believe the work we paid for back in January. I mean, it seems like in January, February, or March, could have made arrangements to have it done uh, by now. I mean, no, it's, like I it's, not, it's a one-day job, you know. And I told Jay about it earlier, is that uh, it was still settling, so we just put gravel back in it about three weeks ago. Yeah, it'll get done. It was just part of the job. I, I, yeah. We haven't received a closeout on that job yet. So yeah, I was going to say, yeah, is it it's not paid? paid for. It's been paid for? It's been paid in full? Yeah. And we'll try to get to it as soon as possible. Right. Well, I've talked to Dave. When he comes into town, he's supposed to do it with us. So. Okay. Anything further? Okay. Uh, new business, setting the FY 2019 tax rate. Yes, you should have copies in your packets. Um, oh, and yes. then there's an original on the table for signatures. Um, <clears throat> so it looks like the town tax rate went down just a tiny little bit. Um, Last year was 0.5855, and this year will be 0.5840. So it's going down a little bit, um, but the major decrease was in the education tax rate. Um, for Homestead, it went down about six cents, and for non residential, about one penny. So overall, there is a decrease in the tax rate for FY19. Motion to approve the municipal tax rate for the upcoming fiscal year. I make motion to accept it like that, to approve it. Motion to accept, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, is there a discussion? How is this, how is this developed? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> They just make it up. No, no, not that at all. The education tax rate is not set by the town, that's set by the state of Vermont, and they mail us a letter. So the education tax rate oh, right. is just a number we plug in. It's by the state, um, yeah. But if you look at the top, it says approved expenditures. Mm -hmm. That's the number that the voters voted to spend, the $1,418,000. Yep. Um, and then the addition to the capital reserve fund of 100000 Yeah. And then your capital needs. So you add that all together. Yeah. You take away other approved revenue that you have coming in other than taxes, and that gives you the number that you need to raise in taxes. So it might also be good to just uh, explain what that anticipated revenue. Um, it could be anything from town clerk copy fees. It could be judicial fines we're counting on. Uh, Free cash at the end of the accounting year? 
Nope. Okay, that, okay. Yeah, that doesn't carry over. Yep. Um, this miscellaneous income. Yeah, miscellaneous income, zoning permit, income, mm -hmm. um, the list goes on. But you can look in your town report. They're all actually broken out in the revenue budget. Okay, yeah. So um, it's like 267.7? Yep. Okay. And so when you take away total needed minus what you're anticipating another revenue, you get what you need to be raised. Yep. And then you divide it by the grand list. And that's how you come out with the tax rate. Uh -huh. Well, that gives it the 0.5840. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Any questions or input from the audience? First, good notice we've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be taking it back probably. <laughs> yeah. So there's a motion as a second to approve the tax rate. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. And the ayes have it. And there's an original there on the table to be signed by everybody. This one? Oh, that's it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got all the supporting documents here. <laughs> you can thank Doris for that. She put that all together. Thank you. New business. We did. Tax rate, old business, traffic issues, and signage. Yep, there's a letter in there from Annie. Uh, if you want to just take it with you and okay. go over it, I think that would be fine. She had a couple. A couple updates and a couple questions. Um, I think one of the main questions she had was how often does the board think that they should come to meetings? She did find two other people to be liaisons. Well, I was thinking like once a month, um, but I mean the point is is that we actually have to do something as a board. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, sooner, sooner the better. Yeah. I mean, How many people are complaining besides this one person? Lots of people on front yeah, porch. Yeah, yeah, and I've been taking time to look at some of the past plans from 95, and then the, the current one was 2005, I think it was, mm -hmm. and talking with Wyndham Regional <coughs> um, regarding their plans for with, Route 30 corridor and setting up a you know um, signage to kind of introduce people that they're entering a town village whatever and you know it's a beautification signage you know I noticed like up in Townsend they had one um, if this plants from back in 95 uh, really now how much has been done on it it seems like it's just been a plan with no action and the plan also develop, uh, is also dealing with, you know, um, over in uh, South Newfane and uh, Williamsville, up Dover Road. So. Yeah, they want three-way stops. Like that. And there's so I think we should, as a board, look at the plan and then chunk it down and say, what can we do? Um, since all this time and effort's been put into two plans that have really looked at it schematically, you know, with uh, points of reference on the maps. I mean, they're thick, you know, they're, they're big documents, you know, here. And, you know, it's all laid out with pull-out maps and everything. So, I mean, diagrams, studies, input from the townspeople from back in 95 and 2005. So, I mean, it's really... There's sick. actually a town plan for every five years. Yes, and but this is, this was a Wyndham Regional Correct. study. Yep. Yeah, in 95. So, I mean, that's the... Using the town plan, you know, that we are going to look mm -hmm. at and applying those things and then actually taking a sheet of paper and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do, 
in uh, the first year, you know, second, third, fifth, ten, you know, so that there is something that is work we're working towards. And then we can look at uh, looking at grants to supplement that. The thing that bothers me about all this, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing that bothers me about all this, all these people come, they complain, complain. They get all these special regulations in. Then their house is for sale and they're gone. Then we're stuck with all the stuff that really doesn't necessary to be there. And I, I've lived in Williamsville all my life, basically, so far. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this happen time and time again. Well, there's a history of it. Nothing's been happening. So it's well, going to continue. It's going to continue to um, escalate uh, because people are just totally distracted with their in their lives, and they're you know on cell phones. They're speeding to get to the next whatever, and you know these studies are made so that there's traffic calming um, conditions, signage, beautification, you know sidewalks, um, crosswalks, etc. And it you know, we, I live on Route 30, and in the middle of the night, I hear these tractor-trailer trucks going by at least 70 miles an hour because there's nobody on the road. I mean, zooming by. All you hear is, a, is like, not even screech, it's just a pew, you know? How do you know they're going 70? Because I know what a, a truck is going, like, you know, regular speed versus going like 70. They're going fast. I don't, I'm not out there with a, a, speed, a speed radar, but <coughs> when it's going back, you know, by my house, that's pretty fast. Um, I know, and also people have been discussing about all the mobile homes and whatnot coming down Route 30 and bridge works and pieces. I mean, it's pretty dangerous. They're going fast in the middle of the day. <coughs> and around through, you know, curves and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it, it's really important. Um, people are, are going to look at all the deaths that have happened down in Brattleboro for people walking in the sidewalks, crossing the road. I followed two mobile homes up Route 30 <laughs> recently. And there wasn't one of them going over 45 miles an hour. Well, I'm, I'm watching the ones going down south. I'm not, all, of the, all the ones that I see are going south and they're going very fast. I did have one just <coughs> at the end of last week and we were on the corner there in uh, Townsend. Mm -hmm. um, and with his, um, his truck in front, his warning truck in front, paying no attention whatsoever. Pretty soon the driver was all the way over from the town hall. I had to damn near go up on the curb yeah. to not get hit. So sometimes they don't pay as good attention as they should. They are professional drivers. Um, but I don't know but what back, to, are, but anyways. back to this. Uh, what's our pleasure on this? You got something back there. Oh. Yeah. Yes, kid. Yeah. I'd like to say that. Uh, Obviously, speeding is a problem. However, it's a symptom of a larger problem. And that larger problem, I suspect, might be addressed in the report that you're referring to, uh, Shelley. You know, it's, it's about the context in which traffic enters an area. And so, yes, you're talking about signs, you're talking about sidewalks, you're talking about uh, other kinds of remediation but that relates to how we understand the places in which we live and the way in which we want to frame and design you know, our downtown villages. And so it's an economic issue as well. And so it's a, a physical well-being question, but it's also an economic well-being question as to how we want our towns to present themselves, what we want our towns and our villages to look like. And so the traffic remediation really bespeaks that larger question of the things that we can do for our villages. And so we can see this much more holistically and see this as a greater good that we can all be engaged in together. 
So um, it, it will take work. Uh, and probably some measures will have to be taken immediately to address the speeding issue. But you can't enforce your way through this. As Chris rightly noted, it's been going on forever. But that doesn't mean it has to go on from here on out. I mean, certainly something can be done. But it's going to take work and study and, and time. I know when I first got on the planning board, um, the traffic calming and signage and all these pretty much the same list as here yeah. were in the plan. And that plan was from 2005. Right. We were doing the 2000, well, actually, later than that, this is for the 2013 update. And uh, now you work on 2018. So I, all these things are important, as well as they add to what is the quality of life in our villages. Um, but I think that some of the things that we're going to see coming out of the town plan need to end up in front of us uh, as we set goals and objectives for what we should be doing. And those are where these items can get done. Uh, because we have the purchasing and the budgeting process that we can actually put dollars and cents against and put it on our own goals and objectives to see that these things happen right, and that projects. there are measurable results. Exactly. Um, that really is where we are until that we get the new town plan reviewed on uh, July 16th. But in addition, I mean, there's already been, as mm -hmm. you mentioned, a previous town plan that you were involved with. Yep. And you know of the study from 2005 that was done by Wyndham Regional mm -hmm. Commission. So, I mean, there's ample information. It's just applying it mm -hmm. and making our roads safer and creating a, a sense of place of, you know, neighborhood, village, you know, being able to walk without feeling as though you're going to get run over. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think it's really important I know you've been here for a long time, but traffic has changed from the time that you, Chris, when you were here younger. You know, it's just traffic has just increased, and we have to take care of it. People, if if they're having, you know, people are having issues with traffic, um, they're not going to be able to sell their houses as well. People won't want their kids here because they're afraid they can't play alongside the road, not you know, in the, in the road. road, but you know, those are all things that can help the community uh, grow and sustain itself because as we all know, I mean, the age of the population is rising. I think it's like 42 or 45 years of age and property taxes are getting higher and higher and people's budgets are not able to sustain that increase so working on creating a little bit more of an in infrastructure and um, something that's a little bit more uh, family friendly you know and, and also you know walkable areas um, it would be a great way to enhance the community to new people Mike you have some input well it's like I said at the last meeting, one of the things I think we should do no matter what is, you know, it doesn't have to be a sidewalk, but there's no shoulders. Yeah. It's all grass and people that walk, they, like you just said, Chris, they're walking in the road, you know, yeah. because they think it's somebody's lawn or whatever else. I mean, where if you had a shoulder, at least when they're on the side of the road walking, you know, mm -hmm. if a car does come by, they, they know they're supposed to be on the edge of the road, you know. And there was sidewalks at one time from past Julian's anyways, they're still partly there and stuff, I mean, and then if you cross across the road with a sh even just like a shoulder or some damn thing. At least they're not in the middle of the road when they're walking up to go to the swimming holes or whatever else. And, yeah. You know, as far as the people go too, it's, I mean, when she, at our last meeting that we had, you know, she, when she came in, she had quite a few letters from a lot of residents right there, mm -hmm. you know, talking about the complaints and stuff that they see there. Well, and there's a big discussion going on on the front porch. Uh, forum, which is a you know an internet posting um, site for different villages throughout the southern Vermont, throughout, throughout Vermont. So it, it is getting um, a lot of input, and, and uh, you know not everyone can be at the meeting, and uh, but it is a good way to hear what people are thinking. 
So I'm sure that Annie will bring some of those at our next time that we meet with her. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't want to just kick the can down the road. We right. want to make sure that we do things that uh, protect our communities. Right. Um, and some of those items are on this list. And I think some of these we could go and begin to knock off. Um, I'm thinking that maybe Shelly, if you could work with Chris and Jay on what can we could get done out of this year's budget. Yeah. And get us set up then for next year's budget. I think that'd be a lot of help. From this one current, well, we're into the new budget, correct? We are officially, yes. Yeah. So, so can we use money from anything that was left over from last year? No. Well, there may be some buckets there that become available after free cash, and, and those things are there. There are items in the budget which citizens or that we put money into during town meeting, mm -hmm. and it sits there. Just because it doesn't get used mm -hmm. by the end of that fiscal year doesn't mean that money isn't there. You could roll it forward and use it if it was for that purpose for which it was voted. Uh -huh. Only if you have, you have to have a special, if it's not capital, yeah. you have to have a special town meeting vote right. to use it. But you, there, it is, there is money there. It. Otherwise, it just goes into the pool and becomes a surplus. It doesn't carry forward. So. That's why it's sometimes called free cash. And okay, so back then to a surplus. Time. Either way, you can use you it. Yeah, surplus. Right? With a town vote, you could yeah. use it. But we won't know until it's audited. And that's one of the items that comes up early in town meeting is what to do with the free cash and where it's going to be applied. But I mean, that's not until next year. Right. Next month. So, really effectively, you're dealing with this budget right now. Right. The new one. The new one. The yes. new budget yes. just so right started now, yesterday. Just count on the new budget. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jay. Just getting back to signage, I don't know if anybody's noticed the paint marks on Dover Road, but. From the old South New Fan store to the Dover line, the state's putting in all new signage. Uh, part of a five year old grant? Yes, it was awarded five years ago. So I, we don't know quite what, what they're just updating on the signs that are there or what's going on. But From what street to what street? From um, Dover Road out through South New Fan into Brookside. It was part of a high risk rural roads grant that we applied for and was awarded five years ago. Wow. And we actually had sort of forgotten about it until somebody called a few weeks ago and said, we're going to be coming through town doing the dig safe for that grant. And I went, okay, okay. So. Is there any way I can get a copy of that grant? Possibly, sure. Well, I mean, we have a lot of grants right now, the sidewalks and stuff too. Yeah. It's yeah. fast. I mean, if. Five years. Five years. Five years. Excellent. Well, just there really excellent. isn't much paperwork to go with it. There's nothing. And that was for an emergency program. So would I be able to contact the state to get an idea of what they're going well, to do? What was that plan? They're already putting on the agent put on the ass. So we have something in writing so I can show somebody what they're doing. It's a very informal grant. Okay. Wouldn't uh, Town Clerk have a copy of that on the file? No, I mean, there's and no... And you go file it and it's a separate system. Oh, okay. I mean, there's a grant agreement, but it is not specific to what they're doing. It's just their standard boilerplate grant agreement. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Ken? Yeah, I'm, just as a side note, I mean, Shelly's right. I mean, like this, we should know what's going on in our own town with respect to that work. Yeah. But, you know, the I think the overall note to raise here is that what what seems to be a problem is a problem absolutely but it's also an opportunity we have a great opportunity uh, to turn our village centers into true village centers and I don't see that we have any problem there at all but only uh, good things can come from this kind of work so while the traffic and the speeding is what we're presented with what we get to do as a result is create places that we want to live in and that will in fact attract younger people and families. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. What is our pleasure on this for tonight? Well, it's pretty much just a discussion anyways, right? We didn't have to answer to anybody on it. No, she did have some questions in there, but if you want to bring them home with you and look at them, I think 
really the only thing she needed to know was how often they should be. So I suggested once a month. I think that's reasonable. So I make a motion that we would see her and her committee once a month. Motion uh, okay. to see the, does it have a name? Uh, it's not even really a committee, it's just three liaisons for the villages. It's not an official committee. Is there a second? Mike said it's got the second. Is there any further discussion? What is it? <clears throat> Excuse me. If it's not a regular committee, voted on committee, what's the sense of doing it? Well, I think it's probably just to um, begin to line up people who can be and will be responsible at, as we go down the road. So it doesn't all fall completely on us because our success in doing all of these things is kind of limited to the amount of bandwidth and time that we have available and we don't end up having that time available. So this, I think having people who are willing to start working on this list is a good way to get it started. Maybe it will become a committee um, if there's enough people who want to get involved no, I think she said too at her last meeting too. We talked about that. Remember, she said that she, one of them would take it under like that, so we didn't sit here with eight, ten of them all here at the same night. Right. So one of them would be answering to one person, the other person would do whatever, you know. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. And that's Annie. That's Annie. In case somebody wanted to come with her, but Annie's really the spokeswoman uh, for it, for the concerned citizens regarding the speeding, traffic calming. So no, like I said, you know, one of the short-term things we really want to do, the town could put, I mean, all it is a grader and a little gravel, put a shoulder along the side of the road, mm -hmm. you know, so people know they got to walk on the shoulder instead of in the pavement. Right now, it's grass, they mow it right to the black duck, you know. But we would have to talk with the residents over there, the home of the lit property owners, correct? Well, the town has a 50-foot right-of-way. I mean, you have a right to do stuff within your right-of-way like that. I mean. You know, like I said, that's one of the problems. People can't walk off the road, you know, I mean, without walking on the grass, which they feel it's private property, you know. There's people in Williamsville that walk right up the middle of Dam Road all the time, and there's a place to walk. They have a sidewalk on some of it, and they still walk right up the middle of Dam Road. They have no consideration for anybody except themselves. And these people have lived in the town for quite a while. Any further discussion? Okay, a vote on the motion to ask Annie to be here once a month. Yes. To um, tell us where, what's going on with her, forming of groups of people who are interested in keeping our feet to the fire to make sure that we can do some of the items that we can do this next year. And can I make can I amend that motion? Sure. And I would accept um, working with Chris and Jay on some of the items here with our budget mm -hmm. that we could maybe put you know check off that we can accomplish with our budget. Okay, there's two ways to do it. And one is we do an amendment, then we vote on the amendment. The other would be to modify your original motion mm -hmm. since you were the maker. Okay. So I guess I would modify my original motion okay. that um, we would, um, as a select board um, committee uh, board, that we would meet with uh, Annie once a month um, to get updates as to their concerns and ideas of the traffic speeding problems. Um, and in their neighborhood, their area, and also that I would work with Jay and Chris on trying to um, find out what the cost of some of this and if we can um, uh, take care of some of the items within our budget for 2019. Okay, so you need to get the second maker to make the second again. No second. Now, I'm not sure that I got all of it down, just the way you put it. I got it. You it's got it, okay. Way to do it. 
long-winded. So the motion is? Um, to have Annie and the other liaisons once they're meeting to meet with the board once per month and for Shelly to work with Chris and Jay on projects that can be completed now with this fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No further discussion. We'll vote on it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the same. And the ayes carry. Okay. Good. Here. Purchasing policy. I don't think so. Okay, so we could just table it. Then. We'll table it. Okay. Thank Motion you. to table <laughs> purchasing policy until a date certain. Do you do you have the clean copy? Oh, yeah, right. No, okay. <laughs> we'll just do it next time. Yeah, next time. I just think we could get email ones okay. to print out. So. so the date certain our next meeting would be 16? the 16th. Yep. Motion to table. Purchasing policy until uh, July 16th. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any discussion? And the vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed the same. Ayes have it. It's on the agenda for the 16th. Got it. Okay. Correspondence. We're moving right along here. Chris, how are we doing? It's getting hotter and hotter. <laughs> You guys are over there doing all this thinking. No, we have the, the weather, the weather. <laughs> Heat wave. Okay, we have one uh, correspondence from a gentleman that evidently encountered road working equipment and went around the road working equipment. Well, the grader was going and he followed it. You know, the signs were up saying grading ahead. Yeah. But when the grader goes, it leaves a windrow. Right. Um, most people know not to run those over if they have a low line car. And the, the long and short is the damage was seven hundred and fifty dollars to his vehicle. We encouraged him to talk to the uh, VLCT liability underwriters. And they have assured him that they, that it is not their problem right. um, the not because they've been properly signed. That's yes. right. And okay. operating. Yeah, that's right. So it's his problem. So he has Go asked ahead. us uh, what we essentially have su submit to you is not that the Newfane Road crew is negligent or irresponsible. They do a fine job. However, this case demonstrates that such road work, road work could easily be made safer for drivers with some simple changes in procedure. Generic word work signs are overused. Um, During construction? Yeah. So I think what he would. There's not much you can do about it because, like I said, you've got a great road, it leaves that burn. Once in a while, that might be six inches, the next time, it might be 18 inches high. But if you're grading right, there'll be a good burn down the road. Yeah. And then they work that back and forth. So, I mean, yeah, most people. Go along. Sometimes a grade if they come up behind it will pull over a little bit. Most, you know, the guy driving has got to use a little common sense. But, uh, the biggest problem is the cars only have about three inches of clearance now, mm -hmm. and there's more than three inch size stones quite often that come up. So basically, the insurance company <coughs> said we're not liable, we're not covering it, and he's now asking the town to just pay him directly. Yeah, it has been heartening to see the excellent road improvement work being done on Newfane side of Sunset Lake Road, and the wise closure of the road, inconvenient as it is for the past two weeks. Though we all have reasons to look forward to an improved and safer road going forward, my car remains unrepaired from this May mishap. Now. We now turn to you for resolution and reimbursement in, in rock damage for the, to the front bumper and undercarriage of a, <coughs> his vehicle. What's your pleasure? You can't do anything about it. Yeah, the road signs are up. Road signs are up. The town is covered. Okay. I agree, you know, especially since we went to the risk 
DLCT or 2C or whatever? DLCT, yeah. yep. And now they, they are our insurance underwriter. That, that branch of them is our insurance underwriter. Yeah, it might be an inconvenience once in a while while they're grading the road a little bit, but it isn't like they do this every day, day in, day out, five days a week. You know, they might, so you might be here an extra 10 minutes to get the other end of that road to working on sometimes, or 20 minutes, but, you know, it's something you got to do when they're maintaining a road, you know? Is it something that could have been prevented if he had just gone slow and easy? I, I don't know the details. I don't know what the berm and all that is all about. Well, it is. They scrape the road. You know, they take one, everything, pull it right in the middle, and you'll end up with a ridge of dirt right down the center this high. And then they grade it, and they bring the other work one into it, it and then they work it all back and forth, and it grades it all up, fills in your potholes and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the dirt road. And, and he hit that, and it had damage. He saw other words, he went around the grader, and yep. he got caught in the berm of dirt. And Just couldn't wait a minute. Was yeah. in a hurry. That's where the problem was. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like I said, they have the sign up telling them that they're grading or whatever. And I mean, if there's any chance they can go around it, they should go around it if they don't want to wait, you know. Well, he went around. No, I mean around a different route. Oh, I get that, yes. Because a lot of the roads have got different ways in and out, so. Uh-huh. Yep. So, the board has no pleasure. All right. I will respond. Okay. Correspondence. Uh, we have the VT State Police monthly report for February through April. Uh, they issued 105. 105. Oh, these are these are month by month. Yeah. Okay. So during the month of February, they issued a total of 418 uh, speeding fines. That was three incidents. One miscellaneous traffic violation for 105. <laughs> that totals out to four tickets written for $523. Um, they had one assist, two direct, directed patrol, and three total incidents during February. During March, they had three uh, speeding violations for $537. Um, miscellaneous violations for $411 and seven total tickets for $948. And they had one directed to patrol and one total incident for the month of March. And that was 8.5 hours of man -to That's correct, yep, 8.5 hours. And February was only four hours. Correct. Um, now, during April, uh, we had 18 hours applied to New Fame Business. There, were, there was one speeding ticket for 105. There was one DLS civil event for 249. There were miscellaneous traffic violations, seven of those, for $792. Nine tickets written for $1,146. And they assisted, uh, they had three directed patrols and three total incidents for that month. Do we know what time they're doing this or it's just random? This is any time during that, that month. These, I'm sure if you go back to their, seven. Yeah, I'm sure if you go back to their timesheets. Which yeah, is another get, thing that we were asking about. Well, we get the timesheets. We have those in our regular um, and the numbers. Regular orders, but, yeah, it, the it, orders. but it didn't give you the, back. This is what the detail we were looking for. Uh, that's what we we're looking for. Did, um, Mike, did you and Chris get this? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know it. Mine. I okay. Didn't take it out. Yeah, because we just got the final bill. We yeah. didn't get these things before, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. You know, right. Okay. Sometimes they come in in groups like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any sermons, sermonettes, testimonials? I notice there's no DWIs. That's good. I guess so. <laughs> um, is there speeding, seatbelt, DLS, DLS, that's driving license suspended. Deep there, you're right. No DWIs. Do right now. During this great, during the whole quarter. Yeah. yeah. What is this? Is Rick's closed? 
Well, it's interesting though, like in February they only had four hours and then March they had 8.5 and then April 18 hours. So mm -hmm. do they have a certain number of hours within a quarter that they yeah. can use up? Well, it's really for either. They, they only have $10,000 for the year, so they break it up. And I think, I suspect if it's a quieter month where you're not going to see a lot, you'll probably see them more in July and August because people are out and about more. So they're probably going to use more hours during those times than in February. Okay. Well, they're around a lot more than that, too. It's just that, like domestics and all that. That's yeah, not yeah. yeah. you won't see those because we don't charge for those. Right. So. Just the uh, just traffic. traffic. Because yeah. you always see them going through town somewhere. Right. I saw one of the sheriff's guys hiding behind a tree in Jamaica, a car nowhere to be seen, trying to grab people as they go by and write down their license number. Wow. No further correspondence other than a VLCT event, changes in the open meeting law. Oh, uh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> and I think we are at the point where we can do pay orders. Very good. Anything further to come before us that we missed off the agenda? Mm -hmm. No copy. Good night. Good night. Oh, and thank you out there in television land for joining us. We still have some work to do, but. Um, you probably don't want to watch us write checks.